Who here loves the water? All right. Me too. In so many ways. I want to tell you about an experience I had about five years ago in the water that blew me away. I fell off of a boat on purpose into a national park. This was in Belize and in the area of a protected coral reef. And for about an hour, we drifted along with the current and explored the world below the waves. I will never forget that hour. I can't forget the coral, delicate designs shaped into beautiful forms like towers, caves, and underwater rooms. Some of those corals are soft and they swayed in the current. And I can't forget the fish, thousands of fish, some of them swimming in schools, some just swimming by themselves, large ones and small ones. The designs were all so beautiful and the colors. The red, the blue, the yellow, the orange, sometimes so bright, it's like they were lit from a light inside. When I finally got into the boat, I couldn't speak. I was awestruck by the beauty of creation, by the bountifulness of life. I didn't want to speak. I didn't want to ruin that moment, lose that feeling. On that day, I could see more clearly than ever that each one of us is a part of this creative, miraculous process of life on earth. Now, that was an experience of awe. And I'm sure that all of you have had many experiences of awe in your own lives. Research shows that time spent with nature is one of the reliable pathways to feel awe. Now, awe is a great feeling, but it's much more than that. It's actually very good for our health, but awe also serves to open us up. It opens us to new ideas. It opens us to seeing and being a part of something larger than ourselves. You could say it cracks open our shells. This is a talk about the relationship between human beings and the rest of life on Earth. Our modern view of this relationship is science-based. It's familiar probably to all of you. At its core is this idea that we all need to minimize our impact on nature. And that view is essential. But it's also incomplete. It's missing something vital and powerful that I want to share with you here today. For the past 30 years, my work has involved helping companies understand how they impact the environment and find ways to do better. So I direct research on that at MIT. I've taught a course on those methods at Harvard for over 20 years now. And once I had an amazing opportunity, an invitation to travel to India and sit down and discuss and share one-on-one -on -one with His Holiness the Dalai Lama the ideas that I want to share with you here today. And the first of those ideas is called footprints. Footprints are the total environmental impact of anything. It could be a product, a person, an organization. In fact, footprints come in many flavors. There are biodiversity footprints, water consumption footprints, and so on. Footprints arise from two simple causes. The first is that every human activity can negatively impact the environment. For example, by releasing pollution to the environment, by taking resources from the environment, or both. The second fact that drives footprints is that each of these human activities is connected to one another through supply and demand. So when we trigger one activity in the world, it triggers other activities, which trigger other activities. Think of dominoes. We call it a ripple effect. Let's see how a ripple effect plays out 
in the life of a very simple, common product, a t-shirt. So we buy a t-shirt. The t-shirt maker makes a new t-shirt. To do that, they need more cotton cloth and they need more electricity. So now the cotton cloth maker needs to make more cotton cloth with more cotton and more electricity. The cotton grower needs to grow more cotton and use more water and so on. How does this ripple effect translate into a footprint? You'll be amazed at the water footprint of this t-shirt. It has two parts, a part that you see, or at least that you hear, that you experience in your lives, and a part that we don't see that's happening out in the ripple effect. Let's start with the part we experience. We hear water coming into our washing machine and going down the drain. Over the life of the t-shirt, we'll probably use about 20 gallons of water to wash that shirt. 20 gallons. How about the ripple effect? Well, our washer and dryer need energy to operate, and energy production uses a lot of water, evaporation for cooling. But the biggest story on water use in the life of a t-shirt comes because cottons are a very thirsty plant. So much so that the total water footprint of a single t-shirt is about 20 backyard swimming pools full of water. So we have 20 gallons of water that we experience, 20 swimming pools of water that's happening out in the ripple effect. You can see that ripple effects are super powerful. Now, they're not intrinsically bad. I sometimes like to think about ripple effects when I'm preparing a meal, just to imagine some of the thousands of activities that had to happen, and the people that had to work hard so that our family could eat that meal. Ripple effects can inspire awe and gratitude. But when we combine ripple effects with harm, we end up with footprints. And we end up with a fact that every product, even green products, has a footprint. Green products, thankfully, have a smaller than average footprint, but they still have a footprint. So every hour, every day in my life and yours has a footprint as well. In fact, I realized once that this me and my footprint view of the human and planet relationship had a cold, hard message for me. The planet, environmentally, would be better off without me. There would be more water for everyone else. There'd be less pollution in the sky. There'd be more fish in the sea. There might even be healthier coral reefs if I'd never been born. We don't like to think about that, do we? For good reason. It's depressing. It's discouraging can make us feel hopeless or helpless or angry or all of the above. But it seems inescapable as a conclusion, right? Yes and no. Remember that I told you something vital is missing? It's true that we will always have footprints, but we also can have other impacts on the environment. Now, we all have feet, but we also all have hands. We have to take to live, but we can also give. For the environment, giving consists of healing and helping. By healing, I mean things like planting a tree, cleaning up a river or a beach, maybe restoring a habitat. And by helping, I simply mean helping a fellow human being, reduce their footprint. Now, remarkably, in my field, we had no concept of the impacts of these kind of helpful and healing actions. So I called them handprints, and I started to quantify them with the same rigor 
that we use to quantify footprints. When you realize that you also have a handprint, a beautiful possibility opens up. Maybe the planet could be better off with us. I mean, we can continue to reduce our footprint, and if we grow our handprint large enough, we could be giving more than we take. We could be healing more than we harm. If one person does that, they're a healing person. If all of us can somehow learn how to do this together, we'll be a healing species. Now, each of us has been given tonight a powerful gift. This is an advanced shower head, and compared to a standard shower head, it will give you a great shower using 40% less water and energy. The standard me and my footprint approach says, take this home, install it, reduce my footprint, and hope that everyone else does. That's a great place to start, and I want to encourage us all to do that. But it's also a tragic place to stop. What about our hands? This shower head is going to save each one of us a whole lot of money. This will surprise you, but over the life of that shower head, we could easily save $1,000 or more. Thank you, TEDx. Thank you, Kohler, as well. Now, we could just go home and save a grand and smile. But what if we go home, save a grand, and smile much more widely because we're doing two extra things? First, we're realizing this is a gift, and we're feeling some gratitude. Secondly, we're seeing that money is power, and we can do something with our hands with that power that we've been given. In just a few months' time, using this shower head instead of a standard one, I'll save enough money to buy two more shower heads, and I could give those to friends or neighbors that didn't make it here tonight. It's about receive a gift, benefit from it, and pay a little of that benefit forward to some other people helping. If we can inspire one another here and the people we reach out to to follow this behavior, we will give birth to something called a save wave. A save wave is a wave of positive action totally paid for by the savings that it generates. Let's go back to the ocean and remember the message that we get from awe. We're not alone. We're all part of this creative process of life on Earth. And we can use our handprint potential to act that out. I want to give you just a little bit of math here. First, if we can pass on this save wave one week after we receive it, the save wave will reach the entire U.S. in less than six months. And it would reach the entire world in less than a year. Also, the EPA says that if just the U.S. used advanced shower heads, we would save collectively billions of dollars by conserving billions of gallons a year of water. But I believe that the biggest impact of the first save wave would be up here and right here, as we humans realize that we've discovered a way to launch a healing ripple effect. Because humans were incredibly inventive, our imagination never stops, and we're hyper-social. So if the challenge now is find new ideas and share them, ones that Reduce your footprint, save you money, and help your quality of life. 
that shower head is just a drop in the ocean of what we're capable of. So, we go home, we plant these seeds, we harvest some of the benefit, we pass it on with the inspiration, and we become the healing species. Thank you.